basically questioning my integrity. When you think that you know what the right decision is, you have to act on it. What does Willie need to do? He needs to get out of here. I'm Irish. We're stubborn. Wonderful advantage. Not making the playoffs four years in a row. Austin Matthews. Just uh, an error in judgment. I'm not pussyfooting around like some guys. This guy's such an idiot here. All right, Toronto, we are back. And it's time to officially start up our year one season simulation, ladies and gentlemen, with your Toronto Maple Leafs. Yes, YouTube, the Twitch scouts wanted to say hi to you. Look at them spamming away. I'm going to hide you, goofballs, because that is a distraction for the people on YouTube right now. So here we are, episode number three. I've seen the complaints both in the Twitch scouts and the YouTube scouts. When the hell are you going to start up the season simulation, Johnny? Well... This is what the value for me was taking over the Toronto Maple Leafs. It was about the year one preseason, making the changes because we've had four first round exits in a row. And also being so close to the salary cap, once we start the regular season, I'm not going to have that flexibility to move players up and down from the minors to the NHL, back down to the minors. We're going to lose them through waivers. So if we're going to manage our assets, which is the blueprint that I'm utilizing to get this Toronto Maple Leaf squad back to the Stanley Cup Finals, then we have to take care of all these trades right now. First up, I would like to address the criticisms from the YouTube uh, uh, crowd about the two trades including the Edmonton Oilers and the Columbus Blue Jackets, all right? So first off, we traded our goaltender, Harold Bluetooth Anderson, to the Edmonton Oilers, along with Agostino in a fourth for Mike Smith, Ethan Bear, uh, Jesse, Paul Harvey, and uh, who else was it? Somebody else in there. Oh, yeah, it was uh, uh, Tyler Benson. There you go. And a lot of people saying that the Edmonton Oilers, no way in hell would make that trade. So the first thing we have to address is that there's a difference between real world value and this universe. If you think that a guy like Ethan Bear is far more valuable than a goaltender like Harold Bluetooth Frederick Anderson, then your argument, you have to take that up with EA Sports, all right? This is their roster. I'm utilizing their roster and their system. And within this roster and within this system, Frederick Anderson is the is one of the best goaltenders, not even in this league, in the world. I want to quickly just show you what we're dealing with here and what I gave the Edmonton Oilers, right? So when you sort by goaltenders and you bring up the highest overall, you got Andre Vasilevsky, one, Gibson, two, Rask, three, Connor Hellebuck, four, Price, five, Bishop, six, and there he is, Harold Bluetooth, tied for seventh with two other goaltenders, Markstrom and Holtby, all right? So in this game, in this universe, he is the seventh best goaltender in the world. How many teams are there in the NHL? 31. I just gave the Edmonton Oilers the seventh best goalie in the world. Then uh, you take a look at his age, 30. Above him, the better goalies, Ben Bishop, 33. Price, 33. Tuka Rask, 33. So he's the seventh best goalie in the world, and he's younger than three goaltenders who are ahead of him in the overall, making him even more valuable. You could make the argument that with his age and the expected salary that's upcoming, comparing that to Price at 10.5, comparing that to Vasilevsky at 9.5, he only wanted 6.5 for another five years. You could make the argument that Anderson is one of the top three most valuable goaltenders in this universe, all right? So, again, we cannot apply real-world value to the value within this game. I'm using the universe, I'm using whatever physics and, and, and laws have been created by EA Sports to construct our team. And the other trade, Corpusalo for Kerfoot, I can see what you guys were saying about that, but Corpus is only 84 overall. They need a top six playmaker. They wanted to give him up. They wanted Kerfoot. So again, within the system, I made the trade. We, we went through with it, and now we have to move on, all right? So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Now, before we start up the preseason and the real-time simulation, there is one more trade that I would like to make. We need to bring ourselves in a power forward. Somebody that can help us out for the future, but also help us out right now. Now, Wayne Simmons is the power forward that we can utilize in the middle six. Hell, I can even utilize him on the first line and still maintain that plus five. The problem is his age. 32 years of age, we're not going to get much out of him going forward, right? Um, we want to get ourselves a power forward that's similar to a Grigorenko, 
26, uh, somebody who's everybody's given up on, who's got the right chemistry for this team. Or Jesse Poole Yaharvi. How do you say his name, Poole Yaharvi? Am I saying it right now? I, I'm all over the place when it comes to player names, all right? You guys were ripping on me that. Pool Yaharvi, all right? I'm just going to say it like that until people correct me. Uh, we need to get a power forward like this man, all right? The two-way forwards. We need to get guys who work out on the penalty kill. I'm looking at you, Zach Hyman. Expendable, all right? And on the blue line, picking up Ethan Bear. Real nice. Gavrikov is that perfect kind of defenseman. 24, medium top six. All right, so we're looking for a power forward along those lines. Um, now, me and the Twitch scouts, again, I uh, will show you guys because this is their work. They deserve the credit. Uh, we have spent like the last half an hour going through a bunch of power forwards under the age of 28 years of age. And under the age of 28 years old. There you go. Um, who is less than $4 million. And we've already got them on the watch list, all right? So here you go. Here is a watch list of a bunch of power forwards that we have targeted. Now, while we're in this screen, let me just get rid of the Twitch scout so you guys can see this information, right? Um, Anthony Mantha, Jake Furtanen, Zach Sanford, Max Jones, Jordan Greenway, Nick Ritchie, uh, Warren Fogel, Pavel Zatka. Uh, what's his first name? V. Kretsov. Vitaly. You know what? I was thinking Vitaly. I should have just went with my gut. Uh, Lawson Krauss. Brendan Lemieux, Tage Thompson, Maxime Comtois, uh, Clem Costin, and uh, Tyler. Taylor? Tyler? Taylor Radish, all right? So, you have to take everything into account here. The trade value. Uh, we don't want to spend too much more trade value. So, a guy like uh, uh, Anthony Mantha, right? Trade value is way up there. The overall is nice. The salary is actually not that bad. But that's an example of not managing your assets. That's a one-and-done trade. If he works out on the first line, you play him there. How much is this guy going to want? $5 million, $4 million? We need a guy that we can pay like 2 and a half to $3 million, all right? Now, Jake Vertanen, next on the list for overall, RFA. Trade value, real nice. Me and the Twitch scouts agreed that Jake Vertanen could be a real good selection. The only problem is that we don't know the chemistry. You take a look at the bottom. Um, it's still got one bar for Christopher Calico right so we don't know we're taking a shot and if we're taking a shot i don't want to be spending that uh that trade value you go back to anthony mantha and you take a look at his chemistry forward line number two jade beckett that's our current coach that would be fantastic the problem is that again with that trade value so we're looking for somebody who's got the chemistry also has the right contract and has the right value, right? So next up, Zach Sanford, one year, 1.5 million. He's currently being scouted. Fits on the forward second line of Christopher Calico. Now, I'm not going to go through all the players here, right? The point is, is that we've already sent our scouts out for each one of these players. We have a few more days before the end of preseason. We're going to go day by day before going back into the watch list, eliminating players that we know we don't want before we eventually get to the power forward that we want to target before preseason ends. So we have that taken care of. And we have one more thing, ladies and gentlemen, our head coach. Now, we hired Jade Beckett in the last video, or the first video, I should say. And she is going to be our head coach of the future. The problem is that I don't think she's ready to go for regular season hockey just yet. Look at her offense, look at her defense. In fact, I'll bring this screen up because it's easier to see it from here. Power play is sweet, A+. Her penalty kill is sweet. Her teaching and influence is fine, 5 out 5 garbage. And that's always been a problem for the Toronto Maple Leafs. 5v5 defense. So I think what we want to do is replicate what we did with the Boston Bruins in like year 4 or 5 of our NHL 20 GM mode. We want to groom Jade Beckett. I think I want to fire Stone, move Weber down because he's the defensive coach that can teach with an A+. Use Jade Beckett as the associate coach until the defense and offense get to at least a B-. minus. All right, and we can bring back the head coach that we just fired because we know that he's got decent stats for our forwards when we won't worry about chemistry for year number one. I can't go all in for chemistry. Yes, we can get Matthews, Tavares, and Marner going on the first line, but that really leaves us with nothing else. I, I know for a fact that coaching stats matter, and this A plus A, it's way too much to pass up, all right? So we are going to do that. But before we sign the coach, we have to wait for our scouts to uncover the power forward. Forwards. So we're in a little bit of a, a rough situation here, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to take it day by day. We have a few more days to go before the end of preseason. I think it's against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Let's see here for a sec. Yeah, oh no, Buffalo Sabres. So I think we're going to simulate up till the 27th. All right, so day by day, we're going to simulate up to the 27th. We're going to see what our scouts have to say, all right? All right, preseason. Your Toronto Maple Leafs are about to make the last trade before we start up our season simulation. 
Let's go through again. All right. I just want to see what we have here. Vertanen, what do you got? Is the scout the scouts done? Well, they're all done. Vertanen. Forward line number one. So if he works on the first forward line, that's nice. Again, it's only the one bar, though. But I I think he's a first forward line because it said Calico top six, which is the exact same as Matthews and Marner. All right. I remember. Nick Ritchie, I don't we don't need a third line power forward. All right, so I'm getting rid of Nick Ritchie for now. Unpin. All right. Uh next up. Costin. Forward line number four for Calico. No, I'm getting rid of Costa. He's not working. All right, on pin. Appreciate it, my man. I'll get you guys after the live stream. I'm in YouTube mode right now. Vertanen is still there. Warren Fogel for the... I could get both of them. Two RFA signings. Lawson Krause for the third line, but that's Christopher Calico, so we don't know. So I'm going to release you on pin. All right, Radish Thompson. Thompson, first forward line. See, but the thing is, Vertanen is cheaper than Thompson. And we could go long-term with Vertanen because we can give him whatever con... I like Vertanen and Fogel. What about Radish? Nah, 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 nah. It comes down to these three. So, Twitch Scouts, what do you guys have to say about this situation? All right? I'd like to go after Vertanen and Fogel. Thompson, e even if he works, we're going to be in trouble in three years. And he doesn't help us out right now. These guys, they're higher up than Thompson. And we can get them on whatever contracts we want. For Tannen and Fogel. All right. Going for both of them, ladies and gentlemen. We're making two trades. That's right. I don't care. I'm giving up that value. So first up, we'll go to the Vancouver Canucks. And we will try to acquire uh, uh, Jake Vertanen. All right. First line or four. And you know what? Fogel was... Nah, nah. Ver Vertanen was better, though. Vertanen was better. So... Let's take a look at what they have on this team. The goaltender situation, Holtby and Demko. So they're fine in the net. Their blue line, let's see what their blue line looks like. They have Quinn Hughes. They got Edler, who's getting older with one year left. So they could use a replacement for Edler. Schmidt, they just signed. Myers, so Hughes, Schmidt, Myers. You will leave you, I guess. They could use a replacement for Edler. So two-way, yeah. Okay, so they could use a defenseman. And forward, they got Pedersen, Horvat, JT Miller, Brock Besser. So the four forwards, Pearson. Vertanen is their sixth best forward. I'm taking a winger from them. They have centers. So if anything, they need a defender or a winger. All right? They need straight up a defender or a winger. So let's see what these guys have or what these guys want. Matthews, Marner, Tavares, Nylander, Riley, Sandin, Muzzin, Travis Dermott, ladies and gentlemen. Travis Dermott, left-handed defenseman to replace uh, uh, Alexander Edler. All right, we need to make these tra trades. Dermott does not work on the penalty kill. He does not work out for us at all. Uh, uh, Hyman, well, I'm thinking Hyman to Carolina because they already have the defensive core. They could use a defenseman here. Quinn Hughes is what, right-handed? Is, is he righty? No, he's lefty. So he's a lefty. Myers is a righty. What's Schmidt? He's a lefty, so I'm giving them Dermot another lefty. What do you guys think? Who would be who would Vancouver target more? Dermot or Justin Hall? Let me show you guys Justin Hall. All right, 28 years of age, 81, three years left though, and he's a right-handed defenseman. So who do you guys think Vancouver would want more? Dermot or Justin Hall? Offer sheet? I'm not offer shooting, because then they could just uh uh get it. And I need to sign him now. We can't go any further into the season. Hall? Hall? All right, so they would want Justin Hall more. All right, I guess they have term with that. Jake Vertanen. Uh, but I would probably have to give up a draft pick as well. All right, so we'll go draft pick, and we'll go, I have some draft picks for next year. Yeah, probably a fourth. All right, so Justin Hall, three years left, $2 million per season. Uh-oh, I lost connection to the EA servers. Oh, no, is my live stream dead? Are you guys still here? Is it working? What the hell happened? You're still here? All right. I hope these guys are here still. Good. So Justin Hall and a fourth straight up for Jake Vertanen. Are you guys okay with that? Or am I over... Am I fleecing them? Am I overpaying? Well, it's good. You're fine. Good. All right. Still here. Good. Got it. Got it. You're forcing? Fourth is too much. All right. So I'm overpaying. So you guys are okay with Hall going straight up for Vertanen. All right. I just want to make sure I'm not uh, cheesing or fleecing them. So Hall, they're getting a right-handed defenseman cheap. Signed for three years to help out that team. They do have some salary cap issues as well. Jake Vertanen, baby, straight up. Will it go through? On behalf of the Vancouver Canucks organization, I accept your trade offer. We'll see you out on the ice. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Jake Vertanen on the team. Uh... Just uh, just go best lines for right now, right? Best lines. I'll change that shit myself. So we got Jake Vertanen that we still need to sign. And now we'll go to the Carolina Hurricanes and try to get Warren Fogle. All right? So, ladies and gentlemen, this one's going to be tough. 
This one's going to be tough. Leaf fans, I'm sorry about this. I am. All right. But we know that the Carolina Hurricanes already have a sweet defensive core. They have Slavin. They have Hamilton. They have Brady Shade. They have Pesci. They have Gardner. If they want to sign Hayden Fleur, they can. They have Jake Bean. Jake Bean. <laughs> I can't go for Jake Bean, though. We're not going to go for him again. That's ridiculous. All right. Uh, so they already have the defensive core. What do they need up front? They got Aho, they got Svechnikov, they got Tara Vinen. So their first line's intact. They have Trocek, they have Stahl, they have Nita Ryder, they have Netches, they have Dezingle. Fogel's way down here in the depth chart, all right? So I don't want to hear anything about me taking a player that they absolutely need. I don't want to hear it. I don't want to hear it. Um, they need a guy straight up. The heart and soul of the Toronto Maple Leafs, Zach Hyman. I know, it sucks. But here's the problem. With our future and Jade Beckett, he's a two-way forward who doesn't kill any penalties. You know, we have Mikheyev, we have uh, uh, Tyler Benson, we have, uh, who else was it down there? Joey Anderson, who were all penalty killers for us. And at the end of the year, Zach Hyman needs like a $3 million contract. Again, managing assets. Why am I going to pay a guy $3.2 million who's already 29 and who could drop in the next two to three years? He's not helping the penalty kill. He's not helping out the medium top six. Uh, he's not helping out the medium, uh, oh shit, he's not helping out the middle six, there you go, because he's not a playmaker, power forward, or sniper combination, right? Uh, I'm not going to play him on the fourth line because he's getting paid too much. This to me seems like a straight up deal. They're getting themselves a left winger who's already signed for one year, they're giving up a RFA. So, Zach Hyman for Warren Fogle. Now, am I okay with this trade? Because our first line, we still have Grigorenko. I can throw Vertanen with Nylander and uh, uh, Tavares on the second line. Third line could be Fogel, uh, uh, Paul Jaharvi, and Thornton. There's your Yeah, I'm fine with this. Hyman then is on the fourth line anyways. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Now, people are saying overpay, which means I can get a draft pick. All right. And I agree with that. I think that Zach Hyman has more value than uh, a Warren Fogel. All right, so let's try to get a third back. Zach Hyman. For a third and Warren Fogel. Will it go through? No. All right, so he's not worth that much. Let's try a fourth rounder, shall we? Will it go through? Trade rate? No. The Carolina Hurricanes valuing those draft picks. What about a sixth round pick? Will it go through? No. All right. What about a seventh round pick? There you go. Will it go through? Trade accepted. On behalf of the Carolina Hurricanes organization, I accept a trade offer. We'll see you out on the ice. Ladies and gentlemen, what has GM Superb Man done to your beloved Toronto Maple Leafs? No more Anderson. No more Hyman. I'm cutting up this team, baby. I am doing it. Kerfoot's gone as well. All right, all right, all right. Good, good, good. No, that's good. Best lines. I don't care about roster moves right now. Okay, so those changes have been made. The next thing that we need to do... Next thing that we need to do is go to the contract situation. We need to get these guys signed and we need to bring up the players for waivers. So I'm thinking that we want to start the preseason under the limit so that when these guys sign, I can bring them up. All right, I really got to work the system here, ladies and gentlemen. Save the game. You know what? Save the game. Yes, because that that internet connection mess up. Yes, yes, yes. I don't need to do all that again. That would be real bad. Hang on. Hang on. Saving the game right now, ladies and gentlemen. Saving the game. Don't you damn worry about a thing. Uh, create new file. Saved. Locked in. All right. Now, what we want to do is we want to go to our contract situation and see what we can do with Fogel and, uh, and uh, what's his name? Vertanen. All right. So, Vertanen and Fogel. So, what do you guys want to do with Vertanen? <laughs> see, that's the problem. Hmm. What do we do? What do we do? What do we do? I don't know about the chemistry. So, I don't want to sign a guy who we can't grow that we can't move on from. That ain't going to work. That ain't going to work. That ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna work. That ain't gonna... Two years to keep him as an RFA? One year. One year deal. One year deal. Because he'll be an RFA, and if he grows, then we can flip him. One year. One year. Yeah, 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 yeah. I agree. One year deal. All right, so there you go. One year, one million dollars. All right, for Jake Vertanen. And then Warren Fogues. Uh... Hmm. Now, this is one where I just don't know about the chemistry. But you could always move a $1.8 million contract, right? Like, even if he drops to 79 overall, I can move that contract. I think I should lock up Warren Fogle. I really do. He's not even a medium top nine. He's a medium top six, 24. I mean, I can always move a 1.8. Yeah, I got to do this. I got to fucking do this. Cheese in the system. Warren Fogle. Yo, where's Fogues from? Is he from Ontario? If he's a good old Ontario boy, then he wants to play here in Tirana. 
All right, so 1.750 over eight years. Bye. <laughs> Please work. Oh, my God. Even if he's a fourth liner, that's still good for us. All right. Uh, all right, so we got those two guys. Uh He's from Markham. Oh, beautiful. Ontario boy. Good old Ontario boy. All right, so we got folks. We got Vertanen. Now, let me think. Whew. Let me think. Okay. Okay. So I got to get those guys signed, but we also want to get our coach signed. So let me go a day. Yeah. Let me advance a day. Last day of preseason. Hmm. Going to have to edit those lines eventually. But we're not... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Advance another day. I got to be careful here, boys. I got to be careful. Salary cap... Here it is. So teams must be salary cap compliant to the start of the season. Any team that isn't will automatically be adjusted on October 1st. October 1st, ladies and gentlemen. All right? So we're at the 29th. So I got to get these... Hopefully these guys signed by the 1st. And then I got to get my coach signed as well. So now it's time to go to the coaching staff, right? Watch this shit. Watch this shit. Stone, defenseman... Thank you very much for your time, but it is time to release your goofy ass. All right, Stone is fired, Gale Stone. Bye. Uh, Weber, we're going to demote you down to the... Whoa, 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 whoa. Associate coach. Yeah. Demote your ass down to the NHL assistant coach. There you go. Uh, Beckett, we're going to... There you go. NHL associate coach. Oh, I could leave her as the... Yeah, yeah. Associate coach. There you go. And now I need a head coach. All right, so I'm going to go back to the higher coach. We're going to bring back Coleco because we have to make sure that year number one, we make the playoffs. So Coleco, I'll give you a, a one year. Actually, you know what? I don't want to play around with it. Five years, and then I'll just fire his goofy ass next year. All right, we turn finances off. $1.8 million associate coach. That's what I do. The Toronto Maple Leafs are a very healthy financial squad. We can overpay to get what we need off the ice. All right, that's where we can have our advantage. All right, yeah, pay players, not necessarily salary cap, but they can stay at the best hotels, private jets everywhere, wine and dine, best equipment, best trainers, best doctors, you know, free stuff. That's where we get our advantage. <laughs> way over budget here. Oh, no, I don't give a shit. All right, all the way up to $6 million. You didn't check the lines? We don't have those guys signed just yet. Um, and I know what you're saying. Uh, that's why I advanced two days. But we, um, what's it called? Our players, our RFA should get signed before this guy signs. And in that extra day, I'll be able to take a look at the chemistry. All right? So Christopher Coleco, NHL head coach, offer contract. Uh, bang. Thanks for the offer. There you go. All right. So Coleco got the offer, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, Beckett. Now, I want to make Beckett the interim head coach. So, she's an interim head coach. Beautiful. So, that should show up chemistry-wise once our RFA sign. Holy shit, I am micromanaging the system right now. This is Toronto Maple. How is Dubas going to do this in real life? Uh, advanced day. Players on waivers. Waivers will be in effect October 2nd. All right? So, this is what I mean about moving players up and down. We got to do it right now. Waivers and no one signed. All right. So, we have to arrange our lines the way they are. All right. All right. This is getting weird. This is getting weird. So roster moves. I got to see who's uh, eligible for two-way contracts and such and make sure that we are in the right spot. So Corpus Allo and Dell, yes. Defenseman, Riley, yes. Muzzin, yes. Brody, yes. Bear, yes. Gavrikov, yes. Sandine's got that two-way contract, uh, so he's not waiver eligible. Neither is Gavrikov and Bear. So I have flexibility right there, but I want to move Bogosian down for right now because I, I want to make sure I have all the cap space I need. One, two, three, four, five, six. All right. Uh, defensemen who are in the system. Dermot is still down there. Bogosian is still down there. Still need to find the trade for Travis Dermot. Uh, at this point, it might just be a, a, what's it called? A draft pick. All right. And then in the NHL, in the system, I'm going to be bringing up Engvall. I got a trade as well. Get that 1.25 off the, the, uh, off the books. Uh, pull Jaharvi, Anderson, Benson, VC. Spezza more than likely is not going to be playing. So we'll send him down. All right. And that frees up the cap space, 7.735 million. Once those guys get signed, they'll be in the AHL. I can bring them right up to the NHL, and nobody will be sent down through waivers. Why Spezza? Uh, just for right now, I can bring them back up. Remember, bringing a player up through waivers, they don't have to pass. I just need to have the room for the two power forwards, right? And then I can send down my other guys. Uh, you know what? Hang on a second. Let me look at that again. Let me look at that again. If I'm going to send down, I don't need to send down two guys because I have the room. But if I do need to send down two guys, waivers, I can send down Mikheyev. I can send down Benson. I can send down Anderson. And I can send down Puglia Harvey. Puglia Harvey. 
Good. I can send down Engval. Alright, so I do have a bunch of two-way guys that I can move around and mix and match if I need to. Okay. Alright, ladies and gentlemen. Alright, here we go. Here we go. It's about to get crazy. All right, advance the day. The waivers are about to kick in. Hopefully our players sign. I was extremely happy to accept your offer. <laughs> Warren Fogle. All right, the Markham boy signing for eight years times 1.75. Talk about a team-friendly contract, ladies and gentlemen. Fogles is on the team. Jake Vertanen, one times one, because we don't know about him, and he wanted like $5 million at eight mils. So uh, that might not work, but we still have him as an RFA. So we can grow him and trade him. Uh, and that's it? Yes! And our head coach hasn't signed, which means that the edit line screen should be, should still be for Beckett, I think. Yeah, yeah. So if I throw, hang on, Grigorenko. Yes! All right, ladies and gentlemen. I timed it perfectly! I'm a genius! I'm a freaking genius! Now, let's see if we got lucky. Goalies. Uh, Muzzin, da -da 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 -da, in the system. Uh, forwards. All right, so now what we do is, with the extra space that we have, Vertanen and Fogel, get your asses up to the team. Remember, they are waiver eligible, so once I bring them up, can't send them back down. Bang, up on the team. There it is. All right, and last but not least, here is the moment of truth, ladies and gentlemen. That moment of truth. All right, so first off, Vertanen for the first line, right? Where was he? Vertanen. Okay, okay, okay. Good news, bad news. The good news is that he does work on the first line, doesn't work on the second line, which is what we really wanted. Now, the reason why it doesn't really play into our favor is because how much money is this guy going to want at the end of the season? A guy like Grigorenko with the plus five works out more because I'd be get, able to get him on a cheap contract. He already wanted like $5 million, right? Remember, we were trying to find the second line, the second line power forward. Um... Getting the plus five on the first line was never an issue. So it's it's a good move, but it's not. It's, we're going to have to pay him big time the next year around. Uh, so it's not bad. Fogel and Grigorenko. I still think I like Grigorenko on that part, on that uh, on that spot. And Fogel for the second line. <laughs> yes! Whatever my scouts did, absolute geniuses! So that gives us the plus three for Tavares and Nylander! All right, all right, it's come together here now, ladies and gentlemen. Now it's come together because we don't have to go Tavares on that first line, and we just found the line mate for Tavares and Nylander. So Nylander gets a, a, a stud, Fogel brings them up. So I was worried about Tavares on the second line because there's no way you're getting a plus five. That's the highest we'd be able to get him. Nylander as well, but a plus three, okay. Okay, and Vertanen in there. The uh, the only thing is, I think Vertanen becomes expendable. We could use him for a year? Sign Grigorenko long term, because I don't think we're going to get him signed. Grigorenko. See what I mean? Interesting. Interesting. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So now it is time to get to what everyone's been waiting for, the regular season simulation. But before we do that, uh, so the waivers are fine. Our, our, our salary... And everyone is where they need to be, so don't worry about a damn thing. Advance the day. Scout assignment. I think the scouts are actually, uh, uh, what's it called, glitched in this. And Christopher Calico is back on the team, ladies and gentlemen. Day A day before the opening night. I'm a genius! Holy shit, I work this system like an absolute boss. All right, Calico's back in there now, forward. We got the better head coach ready for 5v5. And now, yes, it's going to hurt our chemistry, but because we waited that extra day, I know what the future holds, right? So if I go back to this now, see what I mean about Marner and Matthews? Ooh, they like the second line now. <laughs> what about Tavares and Elander? What do you guys like in the second line? Yep, 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 yep. So, ooh, we could even use Nylander on that first line now. Very interesting. So, Tavares, Nylander, and what about Fogel? Where are you like in the first line? All right. Nat Matthews, Nylander, Marner. If I go Marner up there, so I can still get the plus three with Calico. All right. Tavares, Marner, and Grigorenko. Grigorenko likes the second line. So, all we got to do is flip those two lines around. We still get the plus three, but we have the better head coach now. Uh, the third line, I got to figure that out. Where's Pyarvi fitting in on here? Ooh, he likes the second. So, he could probably play on the second with instead of Grigorenko. There you go. All right, so we can just take it easy with Grigorenko the first year. And then I just got to get, like, uh, what's his name? Joe Thornton in on the third line center position. 
the playmaker sniper power forward and there you go plus one all right so the team's coming together what we're going to do right now is do some power of video editing me and the twitch scouts will edit the lines and we'll get a good chunk of the year one season simulation done let's go all right we are finally ready to go with year number one ladies and gentlemen myself with the twitch scouts we just spent a good while editing all the lines with our new slash older coach Kalisto. Um, and it's looking pretty good, alright? So not only do we have the better coach for 5-on-5, five five, uh, because he's also a forward coach, a few tweaks here and there, and we still kept our chemistry. So Warren Fogle, Matthews, and Nylander, we get the plus 3 on that first line. Bertan and Tavares and Marner get the plus 5 on the second line. Pull you Harvey, Thornton, and Simmons, the plus 3 on the third line. And then Benson, Mikheyev, and Spezza. Fourth line's a little bit all over the place. I have to, I, I'll be the first to admit, we need to find a fourth line two-way forward if Jason Spezza doesn't work out. Uh, defensively, this is why we got rid of that coach because our defensemen look really weak now we're trying to hide ethan bear we don't want him to play on the first line even though we can get that plus the reason being is because i want to offer him a long-term contract at, after january 1st tj brody is somebody along with jake muslin who i'd like to use for this year and next year and then trade them after the draft because then we have sandine and Liljegren that we have to sign so i gotta make sure that brody and muslin don't drop that's why i'm giving them that ice time right now hell i might even be trading brody at the end of this season four man power play instead of loading up our four players on one power play line because we couldn't get the plus five again with the old coach i split up tavares nylander marner and matthews and now we got a plus three and a plus one uh the penalty kills actually looking pretty good what if we had this thornton and spezza are actually penalty killers with this coach i put alongside mikhaev and benson with four two-way forward defensemen and boom plus ones looking real nice three-man penalty kill looks weak as it always does extra attackers to Tavares and Matthews four on four lines I kept Matthews with Marner Nylander with Tavares Thornton Pugliahari that's essentially the uh, the lineups uh the shootout we shouldn't be losing in the shootout at all Matthews Marner Tavares Nylander Spezza all right it's looking real good and in the net Jonas Corpusalo the scratch players Grigorenko the sniper VC the two-way and Bogosian the defenseman that we can throw in on any situation so there it is ladies and gentlemen the AHL squad I made sure to put the guys that we want to play up on the first First line, Robertson, Maligan, Korshkov, Anderson, Boyd, Engvall, Brooks, Cartier, Patan. Uh, then these guys, Hallander, uh, Durr, I don't even know, and Abramoff, our young players. We're going to get them some ice time. Defensively, Sandine and Liljegren. I didn't want to play Sandine in the NHL. He's just not going to get enough ice time. Um, even if this stunts his growth, we did say that he did become expendable with our new coach. So... We're going to just go into the season and see what we have, ladies and gentlemen. We still have some potential trades to make, but uh, not right now. Now it is time to start up the simulation. So, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, let us get to opening night up against Le Montreal Canadiens. Yes! All right, and we'll do a real-time simulation because this is the kind of sim that I'm going to be doing come the playoffs, if we make the playoffs. And if it's a close third period, we can jump into the game, ladies and gentlemen. Air Canada Center, opening night. The fans are back in the NHL. No more social distancing. It's a virtual reality world. And Tyler Toffoli, the newest Montreal Canadien, is going to open up the goal scoring in year number one for his Montreal Canadiens. All right. Uh, simulation's actually going kind of slow right here. Shots are even 8-6. to six, Although the score for Montreal, they're up 1-0. to nothing. So I don't know if EA Sports has made any kind of tweaks when it comes to the real-time simulation. Uh, I, I really felt like what we went through with the Seattle Stallions in NHL 20, I really did figure out a lot about the simulation engine. <laughs> so if it stayed the same, we're going to keep that blueprint. Chemistry to grow players, a good coach, and then come the real-time sim, we need those high overalls. And opening goals by Mitch Marner and uh, Jason Spezza. Now, did they take like a five-minute major in there? Hooking, double minor. Brendan pa Ryan Paling, high sticking. Brendan Paling. All these new names coming back to me, man. Paling was the guy with like the four-goal night, and then he scored in a shootout, right? All right. So here we go, ladies and gents. A third period. Your Toronto Maple Leafs are up by one. I'd love to jump in as coach mode just to see how the teams play. And William Nylander with the plus three on the second line gives his team the advantage. Jason Spezza. Oh! Oh, my God! Your Toronto Maple Leafs unload for offense in the third period, ladies and gents. Mitch Marner opens up the season on a hat trick against the Montreal Canadiens. Hell, yes. Take that. 
Hockey night in Canada. The Leafs whoop the Habs. Oh, we're drinking tonight, ladies and gents. Marner, Marner, Spezza, Nylander, uh, uh, Spezza, Marner. What a way to start year number one. Let's take a look at this. I was going to jump into the gameplay, but why? Game's over. Matthews, three points. Riley, three points. Marner, three points. Benson, two points. Spezza, two points. That fourth line, it actually came through for us. Good job, boyos. Anyone a negative? A minus? No. All right. I like to see it. The goalie, Johnny. Oh, what about the goaltender? They started Allen. Allen started. <laughs> Did he? Or maybe he got injured. Hang on a second. So Corpus Salo in his first game as a Toronto Maple Leaf. That's what I like to see, my man. 964 save percentage. Montreal. Did, did, did freaking Jared Allen? Uh, Jared Allen. Fuck Jake Allen. Did he? No. Price got injured. Oh, my God. I think Price started the game and he already went down with an injury. <laughs> Price came on in the third. Oh, they brought Price in. Why the hell would they start Jake Allen? Well, I don't know. New game, new glitch. Maybe they saw the Toronto Maple Leafs with that lethal offensive core and they're like, nah, we got to protect Carey Price from that. Send him to the next game. All right, so I want to I want to go. I want to start this uh, this season with some gameplay. So I want to jump into a game. So we're going to keep on doing a real-time sim until we have like a one-goal game in the third period. All right, we'll be nice and quick with it. I won't go real-time for the first and second. We'll do bam, just like that. First period, the Toronto Maple Leafs are up 2-1. to one. <laughs> Mort Vogel, there you go, buddy. Uh, second period, the Leafs still up 2-1. to one against the new look uh, uh what's it called at uh, ottawa senators as well they've completely reshaped their team they're actually handing out money it's incredible so third period power play for the ottawa senators goes nowhere our good penalty kill with the plus ones and also Yunas corpusalo but wait a minute michael froelich ties up the game followed up by a five on three power play ottawa stars stop the sim stop the sim stop the sim Stop the sim! I'm pressing... Holy shit. How many times do I have to hit the X button? I hit the X button over and over and over again. <laughs> Warren Fogel gets the hat trick. All right. I don't want to watch three on three. So let's just continue the simulation here. Let's see what happens, ladies and gentlemen. Overtime between the Ottawa Senators and the Toronto Maple Leafs. I want to jump out there for 5v5. Goes nowhere. We got the shootout, ladies and gentlemen. And the Ottawa Senators, they're going to beat the Toronto Maple Leafs in a shootout. Dude, I was hitting the X button to stop the simulation over and over and over again. I think when things are happening, like a goal is scored, it just forgets about that the fact that you wanted to stop it and continue. <laughs> so much was happening. It was like power play, goal, power play, power play. I couldn't stop it. All right, so, oh no, we lost our first game of the season. Up against the Chicago Blackhawks. My God, why can't I get some freaking gameplay here? First period, there you go, 0-0. Zero, zero. Second period, one nothing for the Chicago Blackhawks. Del Pickle is in the net, so we're giving Jonas Corposalo his first night off of the season, ladies and gents. Times eight simulation once again here in the third period. So X is to stop it, right? X is to stop it. Just stop it around them. Okay, so 2 nothing. Patrick Kane gives his Blackhawks a 2 nothing advantage. But a 5-on-3 power play goal for Austin Matthews, baby. Seven minutes left. It's still a long time. Five minutes. There it is. All right, so we'll watch the final three. I mean, it just jumps ahead. It does whatever the hell it wants. Let's jump to Chicago, ladies and gentlemen. So here we are, ladies and gents. Our first game play in NHL 21 with coach mode. Watching the two teams play it while I control the coaches. Uh-oh, in the middle. Oh, Jonathan Taves with a quick shot. What are you goofballs doing? We're down by one. Three minutes left. William Nylander. Does William Nylander have number 98 on? What's a, What? Who took 88 from him? What the hell? Oh, it's Paul Harvey. Oh, man, this is going to be rough. Paul Harvey's wearing number 98. I, I thought it was Nylander. Oh, man. We got to change that number. We can't have Paul Harvey rocking 98 while Nylander is 88. I can't tell who the hell's who. All right, here we go. Paul Harvey down low, working the corners, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> That is weird. Here comes Patrick Kane over to Jonathan Taves with that wrist shot, but a better save by the newest goaltender in the net, Jonas Corposalo. Here come the Leafs. Oh, William Nylander. He's got it. It's not showing the player names underneath. What's going on? Is, is, is that a glitch or something? It's like there's an icon, a gray icon that is showing up on the mid part of the screen. Where's the player names? Audio and visual. Hang on. Player name indicator. On. Displays... The player name when in possession of the puck. Oh, really? Are you sure about that? Are you sure? Because I don't see a player name. 
I see number 91 has the ball. And what is that? What is that gray icon? That's look at these two gray icons that are on the left. What is that? All right, no clue who has the puck here, ladies and gentlemen. Another new game, new glitch. New game, new glitch. Holy, no clue what's going on. The Leafs are trying to clap at home. Number 78 picks it up. Number 97 tries the shot. I guess that's uh, uh, Joe Thornton. Wrist shot, Subban. It says it for them. It's small, you goof. You big-ass goof. It's on small. So what, when it's on small, it just it doesn't show up at all? Hang on. Oh, my God. Change the size. All right, all right, all right. Player name indicator. Player indicator size. That's the indicator above a player's head. What are you guys talking about? No, you guys are goofs. It's showing the Chicago Blackhawk players just fine. It's not showing mine. Shut your goofy mouths. I'm not being trolled by the Twitch scouts. I know they're on me. They're on my, they're on my ass right now. No, 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 no. No, I know how it works. Uh, who we got up there? Matthews, Fogel, and Nylander. It's our first line, ladies and gentlemen. I might have to pull the goaltender soon. Or even stack up the first. Austin Matthews trying to get in there on the forecheck. Plays it back. Nylander turning, burning. Fogel back to the point. Wrist shot. Matthews. Nylander! Oh, my God. That AI actually looked pretty good. William Nylander ties up the game late on a beautiful pass by Austin Matthews. Yeah, it's like the first line out there. They know what they're doing. Look at this. Shot by Dermot. Blocked. Matthews with a quick pass. And he actually didn't backskate to floaty backhand it. He blasted that sucker home pass. Sub-Zero. Malcolm Subban. What a play by William Nylander. All right, we're back. All right, it's all tied up, ladies and gentlemen, at two. I still got my Fogel Matthews Nylander line out there. Two minutes left. Let's go. Yeah, there's definitely there's just it, it, there's something wrong. The indicator is above the head, boys. That's what the gray indicator is. It's just a new game, new glitch. That's all. See, look at the Chicago uh, player name. It popped up. Calvin DeHaan up to Yanmark. See, it's fine. Nylander. Uh oh, the other Nylander. It could be a Nylander game here, ladies and gentlemen. Here you go, Toronto. I'll break it up. Here comes. Is that Matthews? Matthews loses at the blue line, but they get it back, and I think it was off. Whoa, a Blackhawk player. Matthews wings that sucker. Nylander going for his second. Big save in front by Sub-Zero. Dermot with a good jump to keep that puck in the zone. Nylander plays it back. Matthews rings it. Okay. I'm liking the AI so far in this. This looks nice. Back to the point. This is a lot more enjoyable. Muzzin, clap bomb on the net. All right, EA. It's a broken stick. He kicked it out to the slot. What a maniac. And Chicago coming back the other way. Do they have a late goal here in Chi Town to give their fans that home victory? Send them home happy. Here come the Leafs. Do I have the second line has already been changed? Dermot, he's looking to cement a spot here on this team. But Corey, Cro not Corey Crawford, shit. Malcolm Subban with the save to bring it up to Andrew Shaw. Shaw cutting. He's looking across the blue line. The Leafs making a change. 46 seconds left. In the middle. And Aaron Dell Pickle with a game-saving save there, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. Let's get Morgan Riley out there. Actually, you know what? Let's get Ethan Bear and Gavrikov. Yeah. Along with John Tavares, uh, uh, Vertanen, and Mitch the Bitch. Come on, boys. I got Johnny T for the faceoff win in the defensive end. He should be good. John Tavares with the nudge, but we do end up getting that puck. Get it out. Get it out there, Bertanen. Seabrook to Smith. Oh, my God. Here comes Camp. 34 seconds left. Come on. Oh, in the middle. Oh, hold on to that puck. Yo, Johnny T, you want to win a freaking face-off, you plug? Making $11 million per season. That's what I got you for. You're going up against Andrew Shaw. Win the face-off. You lost the, the first one. Win it clean. You need this puck out of the zone. Oh, my God. Seabrook. How is... Oh, that is bad, Johnny T. John Tavares, essentially two face-offs in the defensive end, and we can't get the puck out. Here come the Leafs, though. The defenseman... Oh, nice puck movement. Here comes Tavares now off the right side, and he gets the puck poked right off his stick. What are you doing, Johnny T? But he wins it back into the middle. Oh, Vertanen, number 19. Jake Vertanen almost got that shot off. He wins the puck battle. Gets it to Mitch the bitch. Mitch Marner tries to find Elander. Oh, Marner with the backhand. He can't score at the buzzer. And ladies and gentlemen, we are going to overtime. All right, so we didn't get overtime against the uh, Montreal or the Ottawa Senators, was it? We're going to watch it in this game. It should be a shit show. Now, if you, can remember, if you remember the old franchise modes, three on three was when it would really break apart because it didn't seem like EA programmed three on three AI. They would just act like 5v5 AI, just down two players for each team, right? So let's see if they fix this at all. Possession is the key. Matthews, Marner, and Riley up against Taze, Kane, and Keith. What studs? Duncan Keith. 
And Austin Matthews. They call him a two-way center. Bullshit. Matthews going to the box. Two minutes for tripping. And they have a four-on-three power play. Oh, Duncan Keith, the veteran, making Matthews make a move. It's not good, Matthews. That stash is not going to help you with superpowers. Look at the old man, Joe Thornton with his gray beard. Come on, Joe. Win that face-off, my man. Oh, we keep losing every face-off. Kubalik, but Joe gets it back. Get it down the ice. Yeah. Kill that 10 seconds. I might even want to jack up the... Uh, oh, wait, it's because it's overtime. Look how slow the power play is going. We just got it down the ice, and all we killed was 13 seconds. Jeez, the skating in this game is quick. Jonathan Taves in. Oh, what a block shot. There you go. Get it all the way down the ice, boys. We got it down the ice twice. We haven't even killed 30 seconds. This is crazy. Oh, Morgan Riley trying to jump up on the play there. There you go, Jake Muzzin. Get that puck. Get it down the ice. Oh, Jake Muzzin. What are you doing? What are you doing? Uh-oh, 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 uh-oh. Oh, jeez, Jake. That thing hit the top of the glass. We almost went down five on three in overtime. Did you see how close that was? My goodness. Jonathan Taves back to Brinkett. To Brinkett walks in. Oh! And he gets his own rebound and beats Del Pickle. And the Chicago Blackhawks have beat the Toronto Maple Leafs in overtime. Ladies and gentlemen, we haven't had success early. Maybe the real-time simulation in the regular season will be better than these in-game ones. So let's get back to it. Okay, so not the start to the season that we wanted. 1-0-2. We're just losing in a shootout and losing in overtime. So we haven't beat uh, we haven't been beat in regulation just yet. But before we continue with the sim, these jersey numbers have got to change. All right, there's no way Jesse Pulja Harvey's 98, Tavares 91, Thornton 97, Jason Spezza 20. Who took his 19? Who? Vertanen, get the fuck out of here, Vertanen. Who do you think you are? Jason Spezza is a stud. Know your role. He's a second overall pick. He had quite a career. VC 26, Fogel 15, uh, Thomas Coverley's 15. Hmm. Nah, you can't have 15, folks. What are we going to give to Warren Fogel? I just want like a good, simple number. Hmm. 11 could work. 12 could work. Can't take 15. Let me give him 11. All right, there you go. That's like like uh, Owen Nolan's number, Nick Antropov's number. So yeah, we'll go number eleven right there. Jimmy VC twenty six, Tyler Benson eighteen, Marner 60, uh, 16, 65 from McKayev. Vertanen twenty. Yeah, I don't mind uh, Vertanen having twenty. Simmons twenty four. Pull, get the hell out of here, Pull Jaharvi. Who do you think you are? You're gonna get some shitter number. You got to turn that number into something good. Let's see, Pull Jaharvi. Let's see. Let's give you thirty six. All right, make it work. Make it work, buddy. Make it work. All right, Joel, Pool Jarvis getting number 36. Vertanen, number 20. McKay of 65. Nylander, 88. Brody, 78. My God. M like, all these guys with the ego numbers. Muzzin, 8. That's a nice number. 44, 48, 23, 75. I got a 70s. Everyone thinking that they're studs with these 74. Ethan Bear, you ain't wearing number 74, you goof. What the hell is this? Can't wear number four. You know what? We got to we gotta improve number three. All right? Dion Fagoof. That, that number's got to change around. Ethan Bear, you are the new uh, Dion Fagoof. All right? Make that. Make number three great again, please. Corpusalo, Brody. All right, good. Good. The F is wrong with 74. It's just, it's so, it's so ego. Like, your whole team is 70s and 80s and 90s. Like, you're not superstars, guys. Stop trying to be an individual with the back of your jersey. Worry about the front of your jersey. All right? That's how I see it. So... With that being said, let us get a good chunk of the season simulation done now. I promised it to you guys, right? So if we're on autopilot, that's good. We'll go month by month. I would like to take it to January 1st. So right there. But only if we're a good team. So we're going to go month by month. We're going to see how the simulation goes. So up against the Dallas Stars. Bang! And uh, if they're quick injuries and I can make those quick changes, then we will. If not, then you guys might have to do some power of video editing with me, all right? So Pierre Engvall in the AHL. Replace player. Do not care. Um, all those AHL players will just continue to replace one another. Already? Holy crap, Detroit. We're like four games into the season, and the Detroit Red Wings have fired head coach Louis Lebreuve. Lefebvre. Lefebvre. Okay, man, that is rough. Pierre Engvall is available to play in the team's next game. Just continue, Pierre. You're in the AHL. Don't really even care about you. Uh, okay, very good. Up against the Pittsburgh Penguins, that's a 3-0 victory. That's a 4-1 loss. All right, so we're actually losing some games here, which will have, which will force me to uh, make some line changes. Woo, we're really losing some games. I thought we... What the hell? The Calgary Flames are 11-1, and, and I'm forced... What's, what's going on? 
Triple we'll loss, loss, loss. We've lost four in a row in regulation. Five of the last six. And <laughs> LA is 9 1 and 1. <laughs> All right, hang on a second. I want to take a look at some of these numbers. So the Lightning, 9-2-0. Oh. What about the, the Blues? How are the Flames and the Kings that good? I got to take a look at their lineups. Hang on a second. <laughs> All right. It's because you gave Bear number three. Oh, my God. I introduced the number three back. Shit. All right. So the LA Kings. Let's see what they got. <laughs> EA Sports. It must be in the game, right? Ah! All right, what about their decor? Oh, yeah. So, essentially, they have two players, Dowdy and Kopitar. The rest of their team are, like, fourth liners. Uh, but, yep, first best team in the NHL. Goalies? Oh, my God, EA Sports. All right, so we might just be dealing with a weird-ass simulation engine right now. They, or they got plus fives everywhere for some reason. No clue why the LA Kings are simulating so well. And, uh, again, just to take a... Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Just to compare it to our team that's below 500, right? <laughs> we have a better goalie too just to compare it to our team just to show you guys uh so kopitar yeah there's kopitar and then yeah 85 plus 3 90 89 82 plus 5 82 78 <laughs> defensively 87 83 85 82 but oh yeah okay okay <laughs> and what about the calgary flames see the flames i believe because the flames picked up markstrom so they got that goalie now so goudreau lindholm and kachuk yeah that makes sense monahan Derek Ryan and Backlund, yep. Then they have the depth. Defensively, yep. They have Giordano, they have Tanev, yep. And then the one that brings it all together, yeah, Markstrom. So it makes sense why they're good. Well, how the hell are the LA Kings doing well? So this is the time, uh, ladies and gentlemen, that we have to jump in to the, what's it called, the statistics. Now, it looks like Austin Matthews is doing quite well, but I'm more interested on the team stats. You know, why are we playing so poorly? So goals four per game. Let's see this. Toronto, we're above three, so we're scoring enough. Goals against per game, 3.42. Why are we allowing so many goals for per game? That's going to be an interesting tell. Power play percentage, Toronto, 16.7%. Penalty kill percentage, 71.4. <laughs> okay, the penalty kill is just absolutely garbage for some reason, even though we have plus ones in each one, and I have two way forwards. How is our penalty kill that bad? Hang on a second. Edelines. lines. How is our penalty kill that bad? Let me see this. Special teams. Penalty kill. Interesting. What about Corpusalo? Yeah, I should go to the individual player stats. Now, it's just one month, so I don't want to go crazy. Like, we could maybe then win, like, five in a row just because uh, I know we have a better team than the LA Kings. Let me just take a look at these individual stats so I can get plus minus. See which lines are not working out. Player stats. Because it's also, it's also a new simulation engine, so they might be targeting new things, right? So forwards, our first line and our second, they're all pluses. Minus two for Benson on the fourth line. So the third and fourth line are getting picked apart. Yeah, Thornton and Simmons and Poole. Ooh, Poole Jarvey doesn't have a single point. That's going to stunt his growth. So the third line could be shaked up a little bit. Uh, defenseman, points. Yeah, my uh, Brody and Riley really ain't getting it done. Travis Dermott's a plus five. And then Corpusalo. Yep, there we go. <laughs> I wonder what uh, Edmonton's doing. You know what? In fact, let me take a look at uh, Anderson. Hang on a sec. Uh, let me take just quick take a look at Anderson and what he's doing with the Edmonton Oilers. See if we made the wrong call. Uh, McDavid doing well. Goalies. Anderson. <laughs> I screwed up. I should have kept Anderson. Oh, <laughs> see, it's not a bad trade anymore, is it? All right, so edit lines. The third line could be shaked up a little bit, I suppose. Hmm, Simmons, you could go like this. Just get uh, Bertanen going down there instead of Wayne Simmons, just to shake it up. Yeah, even though I lose the plus five on the second line. All right, all right. I'll, I'll go another month. We won't we won't go crazy with it with it just yet. But bro, I'm wondering if like Brody is too good for this. Muzzin, Dermot, Dermot had the plus five. So what about like Muzzin up on the top line? Yeah, let's try that. Brody and Bear, plus three. Yeah, let's go Brody and Bear at the plus three. Get Brody going, then Gabrikov and Dermot. 
back on that. Uh, we're scoring enough goals. It's not the power play. It's it's the penalty kill and it's the goals against. So let's just see if we can get a little lucky here in the next one, ladies and gentlemen. Tavares, first line power play. It's not the goals. It's not the goals. The goals are, we're, we're fine. We're scoring over three goals, four per game. Uh, it's clearly the goals against. We're allowing weight. Like, look at our starting goalie. Eight something, same percentage, right? So let's go another month and see if we're really in trouble here. Or if it was just a weird simulation. There's a 6-2 win. So we stopped the five-game losing, or the four-game losing streak. There's a 3-2 win against Pittsburgh. There's a 4-3 we see. I think it's just a little coincidental right now. You know what I mean? We've seen this with Seattle sometimes. Uh, all right, so Mikheyev goes down with a mild concussion. So this is a big-time uh, injury because that's a penalty killer. So I want to make sure I get the right uh, change in there. So we're not going to go with, uh, what's his name, Grigorenko. We're going to go with the two-way forward, Jimmy's VC. All right, and VC should be fine for the penalty kill. Let's see. Penalty kill, VC. Yeah, we still get the plus one. So VC's fine in there. Not going to make any changes with that. Let us continue the simulation. All right, and we're on a four-game winning streak. Mikheyev is back. <coughs> I'm just going to continue. Make sure that uh, he doesn't have a lingering injury. I'll bring him back after the back-to-back -back against San Jose and uh, Anaheim. Or actually, if we keep winning, I'll keep him out. Because the VC's doing, yeah, we're winning. You know what? Nah, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Run with it. So I think we're a good team. I think we just had a little bit of a weird streak right there. And there's a loss. So now I'm going to go back and bring Mikheyev back. But I think this team is simulating just well. Just fine. And I'm very happy that I made that decision to hire the coach back. I really think, I really think that if we had Jade Beckett as our starting uh, coach, that might have been rough. Uh, defenseman. All right, no, no, sorry. Mikheyev. There you go, VC. So if I take VC out and I slot Mikheyev right back in, he'll be also be on the penalty kill. So we don't have to change anything. Perfect. Mikheyev is right back in the lineup, ladies and gentlemen. Let us continue the season simulation here. Maybe it's because our team is so good 5v5, the game's got to find a way to score and it's on the penalty kill. Like all these ideas about programming and how the game simulation start to run through my mind when we're not simulating well. Uh, because we have the superstar players, we have the coach, and we have the chemistry. The only thing I, I will say we don't have is the chemistry on the first-line defensive core. Remember what we had with Jake Bean and Volchenkov. I think that was a big contributor to our team being so dominant during the regular season sim. Uh, Adam Brooks has been injured with an injured foot. I'll replace that player. And we are to the end of November, ladies and gentlemen, with a record of 14-9-4. A lot of regulation losses. I'm not liking that. We've actually lost two in a row again. Okay. So let's take a look at these individual stats, see what we can do. Austin Matthews is getting it done on the first line, so I'm very happy with that. But the team stats, right? The team stats. Let's take a look at this shit. Uh, we're just going to leave it in the Atlantic, uh, Atlantic Division. See what I mean? We're scoring. So there ain't no reason to mess up the power plays or anything. It's this. Goals against per game, 3.22. Now it's dropping, which is good. It's not the worst in the... Uh, in the but my God, Tampa Bay keeping the puck out of the net. Montreal keeping the puck out of the net. You know what? Did they make goaltender stats better in this game now? Because Vasilevsky, uh, uh, Carey Price, and Sergei Bobrovsky. See what I mean? Okay. I like to see that. What about the Pacific Division? Okay. Gibson, uh, Anderson, uh, Laner, and uh, okay. Okay. Oh, man. Markstrom, though. All right, good. So maybe made a huge mistake trading away Frederick Anderson, right? <laughs> Goalies now matter. Good. Well, uh, it's still, remember about asset management. Paying a goalie $6.5 million was a lot. I want to see if we can grow Corpusalo and get him locked up long term. Player stats. Let's see this. All right, so Austin Matthews is doing great. We're just going to look at the forwards. Plus nine. Marner plus Alex. So the top four, folks. Ah! Oh my God. We scored so good with Warren Fogel. Eight years at less than two million per, and he's almost point per game. Oh, he might be a 30 goal scorer as well. Jumbo Joe Thornton, we got him back into the pluses. Vertanen's in the pluses. Pull to Harvey. Yes. Pull to Harvey started playing, and he's a plus player now. Good. We need these guys playing. We need these guys playing. Uh, bro. Yes. Oh, yes. Keep on getting them points there, TJ Brody. We need you to grow. Morgan Riley play well with them. All right, so the, the change from Bode, uh, Brody and Bear on the second line and Muzzin and Riley on the first, I think that made all the difference. All right, so that plus three with Brody and Bear on the second has brought our team back up, and Jonas Corposalo's numbers are getting better. Remember, they were way lower than that, so the fact that they're there means that in the last, like, ten games, he's been playing above that number. So he's going. He's, do he's doing good. So we can keep simulating. I'd love to take it to January 1st. Not quite the trade deadline because I want to make my trades early if we need to. The fourth line center position is something that I really would love to target. Where are we right now? What is this? Is this December for... Is this December? Hang on. I'm lost. 
December 1st. Yes. So this is January 1st right here, correct? So we got one more month. Let us go one more month of simulation, ladies and gentlemen, and see what we got. Adam Brooks is available to play. Uh, that's the AHL fourth line left wing, I believe. So I'll get him back in there. Abr no, Abramov was playing. Shit. Was it Costilla? Yeah, it was Costilla. Brooks goes right here. Where are you, Brooks? Where are you, Brooks? Is he a center? There he is. Yeah, 74 overall. I want to play this guy. Could be a defensive. He's 24 years of age. Could be a defensive guy for us in the future. So I absolutely want to get him in. Uh, Adam Brooks. Oh, shit. Shouldn't have played him. <laughs> well, sorry for bringing you back early, my man. That's my fault. You can blame me for that. 3-1 victory over Detroit. Uh, you know what, Adam? You can just sit out for a little bit. All right. The next time an AHL player goes down with an injury, you could be the guy to replace him. I don't like these regulation losses, you know. Tyler Benson's been injured with a wrist sprain, so I want to make sure that it is our other two-way forward and not Grigorenko who gets in there. So, so far, the injuries have been good. I like this injury. You guys you guys okay with the injury uh, sliders? They're happening like once or twice a month. I, I, I like these. These injury sliders are working out for us. I put them down to 19. 19 out of uh, 100. They're working out pretty well. We're getting a few, but we're also getting a good chunk of the simulation done at the same time. So it's just about figuring out what you need. Ooh, three losses in a row, one in shootout. We're definitely a streaky team. Like, we're not dominating. Oh, my God. All right, yeah, I would like to make some trades. 19, 15, and 5. We're, 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 we're losing games, you know what I mean? 5-4 loss to Detroit, 4-2 loss to Columbus, 4-2 loss to uh, the New York Islanders. Now that it is January 1st, we can, we can finally make some new... Uh, New moves and new trades and such. So let me just go back and take a look at the team stats, the player stats, all this good stuff. And uh, we'll see where we're weak, all right? So the Atlantic Division, goals four per game, three. Okay, so we are scoring. We're scoring more than everybody. Buffalo, Tampa. So we got a lot of offense here. Goals against per game, still above three, all right? But it's uh, it's gotten better than, yeah. Well, actually, Florida's, yeah, Bobrovsky. We're better than Boston with Tuka Rask, but slightly. So I think we're, we're doing enough to make the playoffs. We just got to find a way to win games. Like, we can't be throwing these games. Our power play percentage is great. So splitting up our power play into two forces, that has been beneficial. Our penalty kill. We got to get a better penalty kill, all right? I don't care about the plus one. We need, we need something. Our penalty kill is costing us. So that two-way forward that I'm talking about for the fourth line, like an 83, 84 overall two-way forward who plays first-line penalty kill time, Jumbo Joe Thornton can be moved to the second-line penalty kill. I think that's what we need. We need that big time. All right? So we know what we need. Player stats. Let's take a look at who's doing what. All right? So the forwards. Uh, Austin Matthews, 49 points in 39 games played. Point per game, point per game, point per game. Warren Fogle is up there. Joe Thornton. I don't know if I'm liking Joe Thornton, what he's doing. Because he's on the third line, he's even. But we got another playmaker. I might want to go defense in the bottom six now because our offense is working in the top six. For Tannen, Puglia Harvey. Puglia Harvey, you might have to... Puglia Harvey is becoming expendable just because now we got Nylander and Tavares working on that second line. Puglia Harvey is becoming expendable. Uh, Mikheyev, Benson, VC. Yeah, see, I'm liking the two-way forwards. But Spets is a plus. Defenseman? Let's see. Brody's a plus 21. So the first line's getting it done. Uh, yeah. Gavrikov is a minus nine. And what about goaltender? Eight, nine, four, eight percentage. Corpus Allo, I need you to step up a little bit more, my man. 84 overall. But that's really cool because if they change goaltender stats, then you do want to be targeting uh, better goaltenders. Again, let's just look at the Edmonton Oilers here with, uh, what's his name? Frederick Anderson. All right, so we're kind of catching up. Yeah, his numbers aren't looking great anymore. 14, 12, and 3. Yes. Yep, made the right choice. Absolutely made the right choice. So, ladies and gentlemen, now that we're here at January 1st, all the players that we signed to one-year deals, we can now extend. That's right. All right, so let me go to goaltenders first. Can't extend, can't extend Corpus Allo till next year. All right, can't extend. Well, we can, assign, we can extend uh, Del Pickle, but he doesn't want the extension. So that's a big no. All right. Uh, defenseman. All right. Riley. Muzzin. Brody. I'm hoping that Muzzin and Brody grow. Bear. How much is he going to want? Please, God. Okay. That's respectable. What are we doing here? I have $8.4 million of cap space starting next season. If we go long term with him, then we can part ways with Muzzin and Brody at the end of the season. If you want to keep Muzzin and Brody for another year, you sign him to like maybe a one year deal, but then he's screwed. You, I want to go long term with him. If that's the plan, you go eight years, you take him up to 31 years of age. Long. 
too much. He sucks. No, he does not suck. He's going to be, when, when our next coach takes over, he's going to be the guy. All right, well, I'm not doing it yet. I want to hear what the YouTube fans have to say. Travis Dermott. We know that this guy's not, oh, hell no. See what I mean? So we got to trade Dermott at the trade deadline. I think so. Now, we'll still have him as an RFA, so I could, you know, we could keep, a, we could keep Dermott for the playoff run. Gavrikov. Let's see, Gavrikov. Oh, yeah. If you get Gavrikov and Bear both signed for like eight years, you got two guys who will have plus five chemistry alongside of one another for no more than $7 million. That is really good. All right, so Gavrikov is in there as well. Forwards, what do we got? Uh, Mikheyev, who wants the contract? We want Mikheyev. He's our penalty killer. How much? Yeah, see how he replaced Hyman? He's the exact same as Hyman, but he's younger, so he's not going to drop, and he kills penalties. Probably only go like three years for Mikheyev to match the uh, the Matthews and Nylander drop off in 2003, uh, 2023, 2024. So after this year, one, two, three. Yeah, probably three years for Mikheyev. All right, uh, Jumbo Joe Thornton, no for Tannen. This is the big one. Let's see. Ah, he's gone. He's gone. So we're going to hold on to Vertanen, but he's gone, Zo Alonso. Grigorenko is the better one. Vertanen, there's no way. There's no way. There's no way. I'd rather get up there. There's no way. Now we can go three. No, but then he's a UFA. No, he's gone. He's gone. He'd be an RFA after this year, so he may have one year of growth. So we want to put him on the first line, the second line, get him growing, build up his value, and then trade him as an RFA. He's gone, though. He's gone. There's no way we're getting him. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wayne Simmons, no, we're not bringing him back. Grigorenko doesn't want a contract extension because we haven't been playing him. Oh, you bastard. All right. He's pissed at us because we didn't play him. All right. So I don't know. No, I don't want to give Grigorenko that kind of contract. Puya Harvey might even go just go one more year with him. All right. So Ethan Bear definitely want to extend. Gavrikov, we want to extend. And then we got to figure out about Mikheyev as well. I don't think we want to go after Grigorenko. There'll be tons of guys that we can get to work on that first line. Uh, so don't worry about Grigorenko. We took a shot with Grigorenko. It looked like it was going to work. But now that we've made more moves, nah, just not what it, not uh, how it's uh, shaped up to be. And last but not least, I want to give the YouTube crowd a chance to be able to chime in on potential trades. Uh, we're going to be doing the trade deadline in the next video. What do you guys think about uh, these veterans that we can bring in? Jalmerson, Stepan, Goligoski, Demirs, Osterle, Friedrich. Now, I'm looking for veterans here. Eric Stahl, Colin Miller, Kyle Lock Pozo. Um, and because we have a lot of time before the trade deadline, I could also target these guys and uh, uncover their stats. Jordan Stahl, Zach Hyman. Jordan Stahl, we're looking for that fourth line, but now three years left. Uh, Jonathan Taves, Andrew Shaw, Calvin DeHaan, uh, Timmons, Anderson, Felino, one year left. I'm looking for that center two-way forward. Justin, or Jason Robertson, Justin Robertson's brother. Uh, Bobby Ryan, one year sniper for the Detroit Red Wings. I guess this guy's got a little bit of growth in him. Evan Bouchard for the Edmonton Oilers. Captain Keith Yandel. No center two-way forwards, man. Kulikov, no. Uh, Jared Spurgeon, I'm not paying that much to. No, thank you. Flurry, no, thank you. Oliver, no. Uh, PK Subban would be great, but two years left at $9 million. We cannot afford that. Pajot, but five years times, uh, or uh, six years times five, no. Casey Sezikis, one year, 3.3. Oh, that's the one. That is absolutely the one. What does he work on? Third forward line on Coleco. Uh, don't know if that means he's going to be able to kill penalties or not. Mm. Body checks. Takes away. Face-off percentage is a little bit low. All right, the face-off could be a little bit better, but that's the best center two-way forward that we've come across so far. Uh, Austin Watson, no. Frost, no. Joseph, no. Uh, Logan could, sure. Holy shit, San Jose, you just signed him. Evander, they're like, oh, man, we made a mistake with these guys. We should have kept Jumbo Joe Thornton. Man, Vince Dunn didn't sign the entire year. Rough. Radish, no. Uh, Brisbois, no. Hag, no. Siegenthaler, no. Niku, no. There might be some more guys that show up when we get to the trade deadline. So, out of all those players, Casey Sezikis is the best center two way forward available. I like our squad. We're growing our players for next year. We got to sign some guys long term, but we got to make sure that we get into the playoffs. We're currently in a divisional playoff spot, but look at the Bruins and look at the Canadians. They both have the wild card. So, oh, that's really good. The Penguins and Rangers are only at 42 points. So we have the lead over players or other teams, but we got to continue to win. So let me know what you guys think, and I will see you in the next video.
Hey guys, Johnny here and thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, give us a like, hit that subscribe button, and make sure notifications are on so you don't miss out on any new content. We also live stream on Twitch where I take days off my life for your entertainment. Sonny Gray, get out of it. You stupid pieces of shit. I should have gone with Jose for Nandez. Oh my God, pitching change. Fernandez, get your ass in there. Oh, I swear to God, baseball God just decided to all over me. Grand slam, oh yeah. Make me miss the playoffs with a first ranked team. Year two, 30 games above 500, no divisional win. Trip to the wild card. First inning.